Good evening. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord and thank the Lord for allowing us to be here. It's good to see each and every one of you. Some we hadn't seen in a while and we missed you. I thank the Lord you're here tonight. And I don't know if you saw any of that storm today, but I was in it. That was a bad storm. But thank the Lord he brought us through it. You know, isn't God good? And I rented a van and I had to sit there for a while before I could figure out how to operate that thing. It's so sophisticated. I called on the Lord and it started clicking, falling into place. <laughs> but it's good to see you. And I hope the Lord will be here. And I'm trusting he's going to be here in a mighty way. And I'm looking forward to the speaker tonight and what she has to tell us. I'm looking forward to that. Let me read these announcements and then we'll have a word of prayer. Men's ministry, breakfast at Perkins at 8 a.m. Saturday coming. No church next Sunday night due to camp meeting. And uh, so let's be praying much for the, those at camp meeting and all those that will be traveling, our pastor and family. You know, there's a lot of traveling going on and people coming from all kind of directions to camp meeting. And we need to pray for them because every time you turn around, you hear of all kinds of wrecks and all kinds of problems on the highways and byways. And also, remember us. Um, my wife and Brad and I will be leaving in the morning for Tupelo, Mississippi. And uh, we need traveling mercies. And I, I, I dread the trip. But I'm always glad to get there and see the folks and um, then get back here. So I will miss being here Sunday. And may the Lord help you all have a wonderful, wonderful service Sunday morning. Now, let me take your praise reports and our prayer requests. And just signify it by the lifting of your hand and I'll recognize you. Anybody? Okay, buddy. Yes. We do. Yes. We need to pray for all of them from the White House to our house, you know, every day. Pray for our leaders in our country and the leaders in the church. Anybody else? Pastor? And I'd like for us to remember my brother. He said that his legs were hurting, hurting him very bad. And that's why he's not here tonight. And he's going through a lot. The VA gives him medicine. And it just so happens he ran out of some of that medicine due to I don't know what reason. And they're supposed to be shipping some to him. But uh, let's pray for him, that God will help him. I told him that we'd pray for him. Anybody else before we pray? Brad? Praise the Lord for that. Yes, Brother Alex. Yes, amen. Sister Betsy. Yes. Anybody else before we pray?
And you know, I like to give a little praise report too. Sunday is my mother-in-law's birthday. She'll be 96. And I'm looking forward to seeing her. She's in a nursing home. And I hope she'll remember me. Last time I saw her about two years ago, I walked in her house and I had on a mask. And she called my name right out. I said, I'm glad, Mom, that you, you knew it was me and, and not a burglar coming in here to rob you. And I love my mother-in-law. And I, I'm just looking forward to see her. And just pray for us that everything will work out, that they won't stop us from seeing her. Because we heard that they did have some cases of COVID in there. And I just hope that they don't prevent us from seeing her. But we're going to do our best. Would you stand, please? <clears throat> our God is a mighty God. Yes, is. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to you in oh, Jesus' Lord, name. Thank thanking Lord. you again for this time to come together in this midweek service. For every man, woman, boy, and girl this year. And the facility here and the one in the back. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for loving us and making all this possible for us. Thank you for your word, Lord God. And we pray that you'll help us to get that that you have for us tonight. That you'll bless our speaker. And Lord God, that you'll lift her up and help her as she brings this that she feels on her heart to bring. And Lord, we just thank you for all the things that you've already done, all the prayers you've answered. And you heard the prayer request given in tonight. We all need your help. And, oh, God, we pray that as we put them in your hands, we, can, we know we can trust you, and we're looking for you to take care of them. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for traveling mercies today and bringing us here this evening. And we pray for traveling mercies as we leave. And we pray for those that will be going to camp meeting, Lord, that you'll give them traveling mercies round trip and that you'll help them have a wonderful time, that your Holy Spirit will be there in a mighty way. And, Lord, again, thank you for being with us. And we know that you're here. Because you said you would be, and we trust you, and we love you, and praise your name for all blessings, known and unknown, that you've bestowed upon us. Praise be unto you, Lord God. Touch all of our people in need of touch. Those that were not able to be here, oh God, for whatever reason, please help them also, that they can be here at another time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated, and we're going to take up the offering. And Father, we thank you for allowing us not only to be here to worship you together, but we thank you for allowing us to give toward your work. Now, we know that all gifts come from you, Lord God, and thank you for allowing us to have that, to give toward your work. And we ask that you'll bless the gift and the giver of each and every one. And those that don't have to give, we pray that you'll bless them abundantly, oh God, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. It is good to see all of you. Uh, Got to take his cheat sheet. I know there are many that are uh, prepping for travel this uh, coming weekend, and so we ask that the Lord would give them favor. Several weeks back, I had asked uh, someone that is really no stranger to the house now, that has become more like family to us as our slogan around here, if you will, that you're more than a number, you're family. And the Thar family has become just that. Upon early introduction of them was when Brother Jonathan connected with Brother Daniel and they began uh, teaching our people proper hand and gun techniques, if you will, so that we could institute uh, proper constitutional rights that are available to us. It was at that moment that I was able to meet uh, Sister Thar, Reverend Thar, if you will, I, um, or Judge Judy, we could say that. <laughs> uh, but Minister Judy Elaine Thar comes to us. Uh, she's a local girl, Cordsville, South Carolina, uh, she serves at the Greater Emmanuel Church in uh, a plethora of positions there. This is the church, as I talked with her, she said, I just grew up, this is a church I've known all my life. And we love lifers uh, because it's those that are fully committed. But she's also a mother, she's a wife, a grandmother, um, 10 children. One has beat us to heaven uh, and just found out that they're expecting grandchild number 
16. So sweet 16. <laughs> uh, there'll be grands, I'm sure, down the road. But uh, anyway, we're blessed to have her. One of her favorite scriptures as she gets ready to come is found in John 14, verse 6, where Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Sister Thari, it is a privilege and an honor to have you come and minister to us in word. If you will come and be obedient by the Lord, we look forward to hear what you have for us. Would you give her a Ridgeville welcome? Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. First of all, to God be the glory Amen. for this opportunity. And Pastor Houston, First Lady, this church family, my family, and all those that are here tonight and all those that are on social media. I just thank God and I give him all the praise, honor, and glory. Let us pray. Father God, I come in Jesus' name to say thank you, God. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord God. Thank you for my family and friends here tonight, Lord God. Thank you for the special blessing that you bestowed upon us, Lord God. I ask you now, Lord God, to decrease me, Lord God, and increase you, Lord God. Not that my will be done, Lord God, but your will be done, Father. I ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tonight, we're going to look at a familiar scripture. If you would and you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to Matthew, the fifth chapter? beginning at the 14th through the 16th verses. Okay. Matthew 14, Matthew 5th, 14 verse. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. For a subject tonight, I'd use keep shining. Keep shining, Ridgeville Church of God. You see, when we look at the word light, light is the natural agent that stimulates sight and make things visible. In scriptures, light and darkness are two very familiar symbols. Light refers to the biblical truth, and darkness refers to the era of falsehood. The first thing that God applied on earth was light, which gave all other things the powers to be. When the light, which is Jesus, shines, it does away with the darkness. And here we're talking about a spiritual light that only comes from God. The darkness is spiritual darkness. And in this, there is no relationship with God. We're looking at two sides here. We have bad, we have good, light and darkness. And when we don't have that relationship with God, that spiritual relationship, that personal relationship, we're walking in darkness. And a lot of us don't realize that we're even walking in darkness. We've become so common and so familiar with the things that goes on in the world today that we call it common. And it's not common. If it's not of God and it's not his will, then it's not common. And as children of God, we should not be taking heed and participating in these things that are not right. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior, that darkness in our spirit, it goes away. Darkness is not able to overcome or even conquer light. We become the light of the world by our actions, good works, and our love for others. This light that I'm talking about tonight is not to be put under a bushel like the scripture said, or hiding it. When we represent God, we have to be bold about it. Just like the enemy, you know, he's boldly walking among us, seeking whom he can devour. He's bold with it. So just like the enemy is bold with doing his darkness, we have to be 
we have to be bold about doing God's will and letting our light shine. It says, just as a single candle, they overcome a room filled with darkness. What I'm here to say tonight is we're living through the darkest times. We are, we are where there is so many uncertainties and hopelessness. But we, as children of God, we have to shine our light bright so others can see the way to Christ. As we represent Jesus, these scriptures instructs us to keep shining. Shining our light doesn't always feel good. Sometimes it's downright sickening to shine, but it's worth it. It's worth every feeling. For several weeks, I witnessed Ridgeville Church of God members shining a bright light in dark times. And how did you shine? You shine by sharing your most intimate testimonies with the world. Keep shining, Ridgeville. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to share our experiences, share the things that we went through, because our life may help someone else. And when we share that, we know that God is pleased because he wants people to know that if he can do it for you, he can do it for me. Or if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Either way, God is able. By sharing your most intimate testimony, God wants you to keep shining. So men, women, boys and girls can see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. That's what he said in the scripture, in the 16th verse. See, Matthew 5th chapter is where Christ spoke on the mount. He had a sermon on the mount, and he was teaching his disciples and teaching them the way to go and what they should do. And then these verses, he was telling us, you gotta shine. You've got to let that sh light shine. And it's not always what you say, but your actions, your boldness and sharing to help others to the light, the good works that you do help draw people to the light, which is Jesus Christ. Keep shining when it looks gloomy. Keep shining when it doesn't make sense. Keep shining when no one seems to be watching. Keep shining even when family and friends don't understand or they don't even care. Keep shining. Don't allow the enemy to whisper in your ears the words, it's not worth it. Tell that enemy he's a liar and he's a defeated fool. And we already have the victory. Why? Because Jesus told us in this scripture, 16 verse, let your light so shine before men that may, they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So you have to defeat that enemy with his words. The word, that's what Christ did. When he was tempted, he defeated Satan with his words. So we have to get God's words within us. Let it grow, let it manifest, and let it shine through our living, our deeds, the way we walk, the way we talk, all these things. But don't allow that enemy to whisper those words in you that in your ear that it's not worth it, because it's worth everything. Darkness brings us deception, but light brings truth. And I don't have this one up there, but First Peter 2 and 9 tells us that ye are a chosen generation a priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Let this be your sign, that Jesus is the light that shineth in me. He'll show up in you. He'll show up in the way you walk. He will show up in the way you talk. But if we live the way God wants us to live, he'll show up in us. Yes. It's just by your life living, the way you talk, the way you greet people. And for the past six months, the first time that I walked through that door, all I felt was love. And that's the way I still feel loved. And that's shining. That's letting your light shine. And it comes from the heart, and I know it comes from the heart. God gives us to the spirit of discernment, and I see love. I see compassion. 
and that means so much. And if you continue to let that light shine, it will draw more to Christ. You're like, this church is like a lighthouse, a beacon that shines bright so that those that are in darkness can see their way to God. God wants you to keep shining. No matter what the situation is, no hard, how hard it gets, when people talk about you, they call you all kinds of things, all kinds of names other than a child of God, keep pushing, keep pressing, keep praying, keep trusting. God will see you through, and he sees and he knows all. Look what they did to Christ. They talked about him. Even the religious leaders, because see, Christ is light. He represents that. And when he came, he shined bright everywhere. Even the religious leaders were upset with him because he shined that light on the darkness that they were doing. They knew the law, but were they applying all of it or were they doing the things that God wanted them to do? No, they weren't. They put the law above God. And we have to be careful that what God has blessed us with, that we don't take it and get credit for it. Okay? We can't take credit for it. God gets the glory. He gets the credit for it. So let's not get caught up in self because the enemy is so quick to tell you, okay, oh, yes, um, you did a good job. You did a good job. Let the people praise you. No, 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 no. I always say to God be the glory. He's the one. I'm just a tool. Right. I'm just a vessel, a willing vessel to do the will of God. And that's what we have to keep in our minds. Don't let the enemy get in there and twist our minds up. Because he is, he's there. He's, he's planning and he's plotting. The Bible says, so a man thinketh, so is he. Don't let him get into your thoughts. Because that's what he tries to do. Right. He tries to come steal, steal, kill, and destroy. And he plants these seeds if you let him. Defeat him with the word. God gives us the word. So we have to use it and apply it in our lives. The Bible says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We've got to keep working. We've got to, to let our light shine to where others see and want to do what we do and want to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, as their Lord and Savior. We have to make disciples. And we make disciples by our life living, the way we treat people, how bright we let our light shine. And sometimes, yes, our light does get a little dim. We get a little tight. We get a little weak we got to go to the source, right. and the source is Jesus Christ. Amen. We just got to plug back in there and let him recharge us. He said, when you're tired, he said, come unto me, all that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Mm -hmm. But that, through that rest, he restores you, That's and right. then your light gets brighter and brighter, and he just says, keep shining. Through the darkness, through the hard times, through the difficulties, all that's going on around us, it's dark out there. But we have to keep shining. And we have to shine brighter and brighter every day. And how do we shine brighter and brighter every day? We get in God's word and we study and we read it for ourselves. Okay? That's what the Bible tells us to do, to study to show thyself approved, a workman not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. We've got to read his words. We've got to have it in our hearts, in our minds. Because if we don't, the enemy will come in, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy and if we're not strong enough and we're not rooted in the word of God, he will deceive us. So keep shining. Keep shining. Even though the harvest is plentiful and the labors are few, as long as we keep working and we keep praying and we keep trusting God and we keep shining, others will come. The word, the word will touch the heart and turn it into flesh. That heart of stone, God will turn it into flesh just by his words just by the word of God. For those that, um, that don't know, that may not know the Lord tonight, that may be listening, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Christ is here for us. It's time to get up out of darkness and walk into the marvelous light. It says, if we live right, he'll show up in us. If we talk right, he'll show up in us. He's that light that shines so bright within us. We've got to shine, and we've got to shine brightly. Jesus did it, and he came here, and he knew what his task was. We all have a talent. We all have something that God wants us to do. And if you don't know what it is, pray and ask God to give you that understanding and clarity of what it is that he has appointed for you to do and use it for the glory of God. 
It may be singing on the choir. It may be playing the drums. It may be playing the keyboards. Whatever it is, it may be even a doorkeeper or, or, or cleaning the, the, the sanctuary. Whatever God has blessed you with, do it to the fullest. Let your light shine. Don't let no one tell you that, oh, because your job is not up here, it's not important. Everything that you do for God is important. The body is one, but it has different members. Your eyes don't get upset because it can't hear. Your nose doesn't get upset because it can't speak. Each part of your body does what it's appointed to do, and that's what God wants us to do. As children of God, we've got to do our parts, and when we do our parts, we shine. Yeah. We shine like never before, and now we've got to work together. It doesn't matter that we don't look alike, but we're all God's creation, and we've got to come together in love. And like I said, when I walked through that door five, six months ago, all I felt was love, and the love is still there, and it's growing stronger and stronger every day. So God wants you to know to just keep shining, keep loving, keep trusting, keep praying. Even when people try to discourage you, encourage yourself. There's a sound that says, encourage yourself, you know? If there's nobody else that wants to encourage yourself, stand on God's word. We have to be that beacon. We have to be that light. Our children dying left and right, killing each other. It's all because the enemy is walking boldly. And sometimes we get lenient and we turn our backs to things that are wrong instead of correcting them. Not being harsh with a person, but out of love. Well, the Bible says this is how it should be done. Show them that love, you know. People hear what we say, but they watch what we do. They watch our actions. They watch how we treat others. They watch what we say, we do, especially our young people. They watch what you do. My, my grand, our grands, they're little, and um, Ezra, Ezra has a um, bigger sister, Ellie. She's like there like a year or two apart. And when Ezra was born, his mom would put him in the high chair, and he would sit there. And Ellie, she would just run around and do all these different things. And he sat there, and he just watched her. And I, I told my daughter Trina, I said, he's watching her. He's going to do what she does. She said, no, Ma, no, Ma. And he watched her. He just sat there, and he studied everything that she did. And when he got the opportunity to start walking, guess what he did? the exact same thing that she did. So our young ones, even the little ones, are watching what we do, what we say. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful what we say and what we do. Are we perfect? No. Do we make mistakes? Yes. But God is such a loving God that he's willing to forgive us. If we repent of that sin, he'll, he'll forgive us. He'll forgive us, you know. Sometimes people will um, say, um, well, it doesn't take all of that. Sometimes it takes all of that and more, you know. It just depends on your, your relationship and your level with God. My level may be different than my husband's level, but that doesn't mean he doesn't serve God or trust God, you know. We have to stop letting flesh get in the way and, 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 and direct us. We have to make sure that we stay rooted and grounded in God's word so that we won't slip up and start judging. You know, well, I don't do it this way, or you don't do it that way, and it's not right. You got to do it my way or no way, and it doesn't work that way. So we have to learn to work together and respect each other and to love them no matter what level they're on. And by us loving and letting our light shine, God will allow that person to grow. If we just feed them the word and feed them love, even though it really gets hard sometimes. <laughs> Pastor, you know what I mean? It gets hard sometimes. Sister Betsy, am I right? <laughs> it gets hard sometimes, but we got to keep pressing. We got to keep loving. We got to keep shining. And what you have done here these past few weeks is so amazing. It touched my heart. To see people, I, I've never seen in my years of coming up in the church or heard testimonies like I've heard these past few weeks. You get the brush over side. Well, you know, I thank the Lord for healing me. I thank the Lord for waking me up this morning. Y'all that know the worth and the value of prayer, keep praying for me. But to hear that intimate side, you know, as boldness, 
And it only takes God to share what you share. Only God. Only God gives you that strength and that ability to do what you did. And I thank God for you because you, all your testimonies, I wasn't here for all of them, but what I, the ones I did here on social media, it touched my heart. Each and every testimony that I heard from you all touched my heart. It even drew me closer to God just hearing your testimony, you know. And as a minister, yes, you know, I'm a minister, but hey, I, I struggle too. We struggle too. Much is given, much is required, and we go through so much because the enemy is attacking us left and right. So just keep ministers in prayer. Keep shining this, this beautiful church. I, I just thank God for you. But the message tonight is to keep shining, keep shining, keep shining. No matter how dark it gets, keep shining. Because we, we're living through one of the strangest and darkest times. And darkness is overwhelming. And there are so, like I said before, uncertainties, so many troubles. But there was one other that says in the book of John 16 and 33, Jesus promised, I have told you these things that are in me, you may have peace. When you're going through, he'll give you peace. In this, would you, in this, would you, world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have already overcome the world. Light overcomes darkness. Someone tonight that may be listening on social media, you maybe need to come up out of the darkness. Jesus brings light to a dark world. And there is a light that overcomes the world, and we will, and it will lead us to victory. And that light is Jesus because he loves us. He loves us so that he came and he died for us. Didn't have to do it, but he did. He came and he died on the cross. He suffered. He went through so much out of love. And the more he did and the more they disrespected him, the brighter he showed. He showed. He shined brighter and brighter every day. And we just thank God for him. He didn't have to do it. He loves us so. And the love that I've seen here by becoming a part of your family, and we will always be family no matter where I'm at, we will always be family, and that connection is love. That's the glue that holds us all together. So remember, family, when you're going through your difficulties and you're going through your problems, trust God. Keep shining. Keep doing good. Keep loving. The world out there is dark. But God wants us to do our part, and if we do our part, he definitely will do his part. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep believing. And I can't say it enough because sometimes it's so overwhelming that we want to give up. But don't give up. Don't let the enemy defeat you. Defeat the enemy with the word of God. Run to the Lord. He'll recharge you, and you'll shine brighter and brighter every day. Keep shining. God loves you. And like I said, do not let this opportunity pass you by. Someone out there may be struggling. Someone may not know which way to go. Someone may think that there, there's no hope, but there's always hope in Christ. Yes, and we have to live accordingly so people can see, no matter what, that God will bring them through. They just got to trust him. They just got to run to him. We run to the doctors. We run to this one. We run to that one. Let us run to Jesus. He's the ultimate one that can do anything. He created everything, and there's nothing God can't do but fail. So tonight, I'm telling Ridgeville Church of God, my home church, and those that may be watching, keep shining. Keep shining. Keep shining. Pastor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There were a lot of, of nuggets. I'm not going to interrogate you like I uh, did everybody okay, else. Well, so, uh, I'll have a seat. Uh, yes, you can have a seat. <laughs> One of the things that I, I thought was, was true, and it, sister, it really didn't dawn on me until you said it, that the testimony services that was given weren't the typical ones. 
it's oftentimes that maybe someone would stand up and maybe give um, uh, outsiders look in as to my struggles, but never to the intimate detail that has been shared over the last several weeks. And it only becomes a part when we embrace the details. When we begin to understand, I'm not going to judge you by what you have shared, but you are strengthening me or you're being strengthened yourself. And I think it's so important on that. I also think it's important in this particular passage that Reverend Thor brought out in the 13th verse of, of Matthew. You know this passage where it says, ye are the salt of the earth, and if the salt has lost its flavor. Romans, it is... That was one of their entities that they were paid with. Now, we think of salt now like, oh, a black cat walked by me. I got to throw salt over my shoulder because more live off of superstition than they did love off of Jesus. Come on, somebody. But it's amazing that we look at that now and think that's nothing, a box of salt, a dollar pre-pandemic. Uh, <laughs> now Romans is probably getting paid really good. But the idea is this, that the world is really looking for us. The light, the only way the darkness will ever overcome the light is if we dim it. And Christ never commissioned you or me to dim the light, but for us to shine bright. There's a world out there that wants to see Christianity in its fullness. A Barna Pew research study, uh, that's one of the ones that church leaders look at a lot. They actually said that the generation coming up is longing for, now watch this, not a denomination, but they're longing for a real move of God. We often say that we want revival, we want revival, but revival is only a word if we're not praying for it, willing to participate in it, and do our part. But there's a generation out there that cares nothing about the church of God. And that's not, a, I'm not knocking the church of God. They don't care anything about the Baptists, the Methodists, the Episcopals. They don't care anything about all of the denominations. They just want, where's the realness of God at? Where is the genuineness of God that when you say, I don't judge or we don't judge, or if we say as our little slogan has been, you're more than a number, your family, you would know. Because you come in an outsider, and I don't know if y'all noticed, but she don't quite look like us. And she would be able to pick up, your family would be able to pick up, is it genuine? Or is it because I have to? See, if you have to love somebody because you have to, it's not love. Christ didn't have to love us. He wanted to. He created us as his being. But you and I, listen, I don't want to ever get to the place that I got to love my wife. That's going to be a miserable marriage. Because it don't mean that she's got to love me back. But if I ever can maintain, and I hope we always do, baby, that it's because I want to love you. I do, my, my heart beats for her, and hopefully hers beats on me. And then, again, hopefully it's on the same beat pattern, so we, you, you know. Uh, but the Alex, if, if I feel like, well, I got to go to church, stay home. And that's coming from a minister, so, you know, judge me if you want to. But the I got to becomes a hindrance to I need to praise him. I just got to praise him. Now, if you say, I got to praise him for all he's done for me, that's great. But if you ever get to a place where I got to praise him because everybody else is, he knows it's not genuine. The enemy knows it's not genuine. And the people beside you, and let's be honest, they know it's not genuine either. Especially that wife that you just argued and chewed out and probably cussed out before you come to church. And then you want to, oh, this little light of mine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she about to dot that eye. <laughs> uh, 
So listen, in, in everything, we do need to let that light shine. We got to let it shine, unafraid to let it shine. We live in a dark world? Absolutely. Absolutely. Churches are closing down left and right. And the society that you and I live in has become complacent with an at-home church. And listen, if you're a shut-in and, and there are times for that, but then there are times to be in the presence of God with God's people. I want to come to church. I long to come to church because I get to meet wonderful people and, and we get to see God move in lovely and, and even mysterious ways. And I want to be a part of it. And I hope you do too. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, we love you today. And we're thankful for the message. So many nuggets, God, that... I hope we grasp them all. But there is a, a world out there that is trying to conquer the church. The darkness is trying to overcome the light. And as long as we don't have a standard of holiness and as long as we don't preach the gospel for what it is and as long as we don't maintain the word of God, it will do just that. But where is the remnants that will stand for the firmness of the word of God and preach truth as truth and holiness as holiness and be able to declare thus saith the Lord because it is in your word. It's not watered down to pack a pew, but it's fullness and glory. It's magnified because it is something that is not normally preached, but God let it be a common occurrence here that the message that flows forth out of this this house is always the word of God. It's not the words of man to touch and scratch itchy ears, but it's to be in the right will of God. I pray that you would anoint this house. I pray that you would anoint the speakers of the house, the teachers of the house, the evangelists, the apostles and prophets and all the manifestations that take place. Let us be that beacon of hope. Let us be that lighthouse. And Father, we know as a lighthouse, some boats never engage the lighthouse, but the light still paved the way. And so, Father, we know that there will be some that will never grace these doors, but our message and our stance will be the light that will guide them and direct their paths. And we'll only know about that when we reach heaven. So, God, let us not be weak in well-doing. Let us not faint, but Lord, let us press on and engage the call and understand our purpose. And together, together as one, as Reverend Thar pointed out, as one body with many members, let us not get upset that someone else may get the spotlight or it's somebody else gets a turn or somebody else gets this or that. We're one body with one purpose. And so God, help us that everything that we do brings glory and honor to you. And it is in your name we pray. It's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Don't forget men Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning at Perkins in Somerville is the men's breakfast. There is no PM service this coming Sunday night due to camp meeting. God bless you. Love you. Have a wonderful weekend.